What's up guys, Coach As. I was speaking to one of my guys the other day and he said he was getting really confused by how to program road work into his training. By road work, I mean running. How does he fit in and how much running should he be doing? What type of running should he be doing? Should it be steady state? Should he be doing hill sprints? By talking to him, I realized a lot of his confusion was coming from watching other fighters, watching UFC guys, and seeing what they're doing on social media. Guys, I've said it before, I'll say it a million times. Please don't compare yourself, A, to anyone else. It's, it's not healthy in general. It's good, just general life advice. But when it comes to martial arts, don't compare yourself to what you're seeing on Instagram or Facebook or embedded programs. All of this is designed in a very specific way to make people look a very specific way. They're only gonna post the days where they run. So it looks like they run all the time because that's the only time they're gonna post about running. They're never gonna put up a post that says, really didn't feel like running today, so I didn't, sat here on my sofa with their feet. They're not gonna post that. They're gonna post when they run. Now again, the other thing is, don't compare yourself to people who do this as a full-time gig because yeah, they're probably running multiple times a week but they've got the time because it's their full-time gig. They need to do that because they need to give themselves every possible advantage because that's how they get paid. And for a lot of these guys, they're not going to a job the next day. Now, I know loads are, some are, but a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are running in the morning, doing five, six miles, and then resting, sleeping, eating, recovering for the whole day before they go to training again in the evening. And these training sessions, you'll hear them talk about a two hour training session. The first 30 minutes of that is just slowly, gradually warming up. It's not two hours of high intensity training. They have the luxury of being able to ramp up their training slowly, get up to their peak performance, spend some time there, and then ramp it back down on the other end, which means that they keep themselves very safe from things like injury and from over fatigue. Don't compare yourself to this. But nonetheless, I do understand what you're saying. You wanna start getting some road work in and you're struggling to understand how much of it you should be doing and what style you should be doing it in. Now, I've just recently posted a video, or I should have posted a video, about weight training and it's a very similar thing to that. You need to ask yourself, do you want to be a good runner or do you want to be a good martial artist? Do you want to be a good martial artist who wants to supplement their training with running? Or do you want to be a good runner who supplements their training with martial arts? Because you can't be both, okay? Now I assume, as I did with the other video, that you're on a martial arts channel, that you're here to be a good martial artist, and you know and you've heard that doing some running will probably help that. And of course it will. What does running do? It improves our cardiovascular system. I don't know if we spoke about energy systems, but I recommend reading up on them. Do you use your own advice? Because I don't use my own advice a lot of times. There are basically, I'm not gonna go into detail on it today, but there are four energy systems that we can use within our system. And what I mean by that is, let's give, let's give you a quick example, right? If I'm just leisurely walking, okay, I'm using a certain energy system with my body. It's very oxygen dependent, it's very relaxed, I can do it for a very long time, okay? If I start jogging, if I start running, I start breathing a little bit faster, and if I did that, I wouldn't be able to sustain that for as long as I'd be able to sustain the walking. Now, if I started running, like sprinting pretty fast, I'd be able to sustain that for an even shorter amount of time, and it's becoming less about oxygen, we start talking about things like lactic acid buildup in the muscles. And then, take running out of it all entirely, let's say I needed to pick something up off the floor, I needed to get a car off of someone, and it's one movement that once I've done it, I'm spent, I can't do anything else. Really, really layman's it for you. With a lot of sports, such as marathon running, you're only gonna use maybe two of those. You're gonna get nowhere near the sprinting or the lifting a car off somebody. You're in those, those cardio ranges, you're on this end of the spectrum. Now, if you're a professional power lifter, you're on the other end of the spectrum to the extreme. You're just lifting something up, giving a scream, throwing it down, walking away recovering for five to 10 minutes before you can try and do it again. Here's where martial arts is quite a tricky one. You'll probably end up using basically all four. 
at some stage in a fight, in training, in competition. So you need a level of conditioning across the board. This is why I, we I see it all the time. People will come in the gym and they run marathons. They consider themselves to be very fit. They'll do one session with us and they're, they're beaten up. They're knackered. They're so tired. And it's because although those energy systems are amazing, they don't have so much in the way of the sprinting energy, the explosive energy, the fast. The same will get big, strong, power lifter, bodybuilder. You know, their physique look amazing. They look like they're chiseled out of stone, but they don't have that cardio. They don't have that ability to do that sustained work over time. And what happens is when you train martial arts, you need to try and develop all of these systems. They don't need to be even. They don't all need to be equal. And especially depending on your style and depending on the martial art you do and how much you compete, you're going to favor one over the other, but you need to develop them. Let's get it back to running. This is why you're confused about how to run. Because yeah, steady state running, as in going for a long jog, getting five miles in, that's gonna improve your cardiovascular routine. Those first two areas that we spoke about. Hill sprints, or going to the track and running sprints, is going to increase the other two. So the short answer is, you need both. You could train them on the same day. So you could do your long run, finish it with sprints, or do some running, do some sprints, and then finish your long run. I'd suggest to do it that way because again, what you're doing is you're combining energy systems. You're going from cardio-based state to more anaerobic-based state, and then coming back to a cardio state. Very realistic in a fight, right? We touch gloves, we're bouncing, we're moving, we're cardio-based, we're throwing some hands. Suddenly, we get real explosive, we're going through a heavy exchange, we're on the attack, then things back off a little bit, and we're in and out between that cardio and that explosiveness. So that's a good way to approach it. How often should you do it? We spoke about this with the weight training. You need to look at how often you have the opportunity to train. Are you full-time, or is this your hobby, your part-time? If it's your hobby, if it's your part-time, here's my genuine recommendation, once. One time a week. Because if you've got the opportunity to train, let's say four times a week, you've got four times of the week where you can really put a good solid hour, hour and a half. You know, we're being realistic here. You've got kids, you've got a job, you've got a wife, you've got all these responsibilities on you. You try to fit in training where you can, but you know, life is busy. It's fine. Three out of those four, you wanna go to class. Go hit a bag, man. Go do pads, go do sparring. I would say if it's four times, do all four of them at class because you're gonna get all of this stuff there, okay? You don't need to necessarily supplement it. Now, if you can get that extra day, I like to do it on a weekend if I'm gonna do it at all, go for a run, you know, on the weekend. It also, it's nice to mix it up. It's great to get outdoors. It's great to, you know, running in itself has a lot of its own benefits. One thing I will say is, for me anyway, running does a number on my knees. And this is another thing to consider because if you find that when you run, you get knee pain, what's that gonna impact for the next week? Your martial arts training. You're not gonna be able to hit the bag, do the pads, do the sparring if your knees are shot. Ah. 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 Maybe don't run at all. Now that's a mad thing to say for a lot of people. They're like, no, you have to run. You have to get that groundwork in. Mm, do you? You can supplement it, man. Go hit a bag, but hit a bag in a way where you're approaching it from a cardio standpoint. This is the other thing I notice people doing wrong all the time. Let's take bag work as an example. You can do a whole lot with a punch bag. You can approach bag work training in a whole bunch of different ways. Yes, obviously you can work technique on it. Obviously, you can drill very specific sequences on it. But the other thing you can use it for is as a cardio machine, but a cardio machine that allows you to replicate your sport and the dynamics within it. So here's an example. Set a three minute round, two minute round, who cares? Set an amount of time and then set intervals of about 30 seconds and go through these energy systems in these intervals. 30 seconds, just touch it, just moving, footwork angles just very light 30 seconds consistently hitting the bag okay again not full power we're not pelting it we're not trying to break the bag or knock it off of the uh, bracket we're just working 
Then 30 seconds, we're going for some power. We're really trying to lay into that bag. And final 30 seconds, maybe just take one combo. Yeah, a hook cross and throw it like you're trying to break the bag. Throw it until your arms feel like they're full of lead and they're gonna fall off. Boom, rest. Rest for a good one minute. Depending on how like you want to push it, I'd say, you know, replicate what you do in the fight. So if you get a one minute rest between rounds in the fight, take that one minute rest. Try to recoup and then go through it again. Nice and light, a little bit heavier, a little bit. Go through the gears and do that for 30 minutes. So instead of going for a 30 minute run and doing some hill sprints, you've replicated what you want that to help and benefit by doing it onto a punch bag. Let's just quickly summarize. If you want to do road work, I'd say unless you've got the time to go multiple times because you can train full time, do it once a week, get it in on the weekends or get it in on an early morning, you know, before you're going to do anything for your day. Combine steady state running with things like hill sprints and general sprints so that you're attacking all the energy systems throughout the body. However, be aware that if it flares up injuries or causes issues at your ankles, your knees or your hips, then there are other things that you can do to substitute it, such as bag work or, for example, a rowing machine or GSP famously really enjoyed using the swimming pool. Very low impact, doesn't affect your joints and allows you to still go through things like energy systems by just swimming and working at different rates. So there we are guys, I hope that's been helpful for you. If it has done, hit that like button for me. It really helps out the channel reach more people, which we really need to do. Subscribe to the channel, we've got new videos coming out every single week and I will see you on the next one.